that burning in your mind for a little while because um, we, we have on the line uh, a caller from last week, uh, Matt Slick from uh, Carm.org. Are you there, Matt? Hey, I'm here. How are you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm Matt. Um, yeah. We spoke by email, and Tracy Harris is with me as Hi. well. Hi, Tracy. Um, I wanted to, to, I don't know, get a couple things out of the way, kind of clearing up for last week. And some of this is directed to you, and some of it's directed to the people that watch the show. I don't know how familiar you are, you are with the show. Um, in addition to the fact that we, we broadcast to Austin on public access television, we also stream the show live over the internet, and then the shows are uploaded. So some people see things a week later, a year later, five years later. The show's been on for 11 years, so some people are behind the curve, and, and I, I don't have any other method of correcting things. Um, some, some of the things that happened last week, um, first of all, there was uh, some confusion about terms. I tried to call in um, and, and did get through, but during the conversation, I, I, I could not uh, get through to talk to you, and I just decided I'd hold it off till this week. Um, and I think, as objectively as I can, um, I don't want to apply blame for confusion of terms. I'd just like to say that s for some of what you said, I was at least in complete agreement within the context of what you're talking about. And I wanted to see if this week, um, and I have actually the printout. For those, for those people who are interested, the, the website uh, is carm.org. That's C-A-R-M.org. And if you click on, um, I think the easiest way to navigate to this, to this actual transcendent argument for the existence of God is um, there's a link there for uh, secular movements and then one for atheism. And then you'll probably find a link for is atheism viable. And then there's a link from there. I don't know. Matt, is there a shorter way to get there? Oh, that sounds pretty good. All right. Um, and, I, and first of all, uh, you know, obviously I, I can't speak uh, for the, the gentlemen who were here last week. Um, we've had lots of conversations uh, about this and plenty of email feedback um, with people taking all kinds of different takes on what happened. And I, I'm just going to, for the sake of this, uh, set most of that aside. Uh, I wanted to start by saying that when I went to the site and read the argument, and, and I've read TAG before in different formats or whatever else, uh, I like what you did with it in the sense that you, this is, this is something that, uh, the, the foundations of TAG are something th that I, I would almost say are self-evident, and it confuses me when, when people have a difficulty grasping this. Uh, but the argument itself and, and the, the construct that you're, that you're going through is not something that is necessarily approachable or accessible to everybody. And I think you did a good job of, of making it as approachable as it can be. So, Wow, I want to say thanks for that because I agree exactly with what you're saying. It, it does take a bit of, um, I don't know, uh, mental ability to kind of get through some of the arguments. That's the strength of it, but it's also the weakness of it, I think, that some people can't really grasp some of the principles in there. I don't yeah, it's, it's probably but it's just a... No, no, I, I, I agree. It's probably one of the reasons why, why this, it may be one of the reasons why this isn't as popular. I will say, though, that, um, I, and I've got the, the printout in front of me, um, if you want to follow along so that we can, you know, get to the meat, because I think there's a, a few spots where I've identified, at least as far as I'm concerned, uh, clear problems. Um, and some of these, to be fair, you, you list objections there in, with your responses. Um, some of the objections I'm going to launch um, are similar to or perhaps uh, contextually identical to, to some objections you've received. And in that case, um, I'm not necessarily sure that I buy the response that you gave. Some of these I did not see at the website as well. But okay. starting with number one, um, and part of the way, by the way, part of the confusion from last week, and this is for the, for the, for the viewers and, and for you as well. Um, you, when you started talking, um, in, in your written version, you're very clear, you, you, logical absolutes, logical absolutes, logical absolutes, so that, you, so that the, the person who's reading this knows that you're not talking about just logic, as in the model that we use, the application of these absolutes. You're talking about the absolutes themselves. And we're, right. talk, we're talking about uh, classical logic as well, Aristotelian uh, syllogistic logic, although I'd argue that all the other versions are still dependent upon this. I mean, we're talking, huh. we're talking about something that's absolute um, in that sense. Matt, I'm surprised again. Well said. I, I told you. I'm, 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 in a, I'm in agreement here. Here's the thing. So, so we're, we're going to go ahead with uh, number one. There's the law of identity, the law of non-contradiction, and the law of the middle. Um, okay, fine. I, I, I got no objection to those. 
Um, number two, logical absolutes are truth statements, such as that which exists has attributes in nature. And yeah, I, I would not only agree with that, but I'd say that, that these absolutes only apply to statements that are truth statements. If there's something that is inherent, uh, except in a meta sense, and I'll, I don't want to confuse everybody, but I'll get to that in a second. If there's a statement like, um, this statement is false, which is internally in co contradictory. These absolutes don't say that any statement you could make is necessarily true or false. These absolutes say that any statement you could make have the characteristics of whatever that statement is and not the characteristics of whatever that statement isn't. Do you follow? Jump in. I'm with you. The statement, this statement is false, does not fall into the category of excluded middle, but under the category of uh, non-contradiction because right. it's a self-refuting statement. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you there, too. Okay. So then we get to logical absolutes or transcendent. Uh, actually, I, I, I'm going to, for the purposes of this, I'm, number three is logical absolutes form the, form the basis of rational discourse. That's, that's where I, I was agreeing with you before as well, that um, without these absolutes, uh, you, you really can't make truth statements, and, and anything could be contradictory. You have no way of discerning what is or isn't. That's correct. Okay. So number four, logical absolutes are transcendent. This is the one where, where you kind of got an objection, um, although I think that the discussion was referencing two different things. And also, I think that a lot of, um, I, I don't want to say atheists, that's, that's not actually correct. Um, secularists um, have a knee-jerk reaction to the word transcendent. Um, and it's justified in, in the sense that how transcendent is used colloquially is something that we would obviously launch an objection to. But that's not the usage you're talking about here. Really, your usage is, it, should, it might be better just to say non-contingent. It's not contingent upon space, time, matter, or thought. Um, yes. As far as logical absolutes, not be contingent upon thought. Uh, the nature of logical absolutes is that there are conceptual. Thought is conceptual. Well, so you're getting ahead of me. You, you, you're getting ahead of me. And, and actually, to be fair, I, I did move ahead. So go ahead. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily agree with the last premise there in that uh, they're not of thought or things like that, but they're not contingent upon physical uh, existence. Yeah. The reason we know that is because of the property material. You can probably get into that. I'll let you read through it, uh, the property function. But go ahead. So, so, so we, we've reached essentially the first part where I think there's a problem, and that is in, in number four on number three, uh, four sub three, you say logical absolutes are not dependent on people. That is, they are not the product of human thinking. My response to that is, I agree. They are not the product of human thinking. And we're talking about the absolutes here. Um, I, I would just extend that to say that there's no reason to think they're the product of any thinking. And the only reason I can see that you wouldn't simply put that there is because in a minute, you're going to turn around and argue that they are a product of thinking. I'm not sure how to answer that, um, uh, because, let's see if I can get this out. To say that the product of thinking, um, since they are conceptual by nature, it's like saying they have to exist if someone thinks them. Uh, but then is the thinking the process, the res uh, bring, bring the result of a logical absolute, well, then you'd fall back on the category of them being formed by someone's thinking. That wouldn't work. What, that's, I think that's partly why I'm object, objecting to, well, we're, we're not quite to number six yet, but we, we are because we're, we're meshing this together a little bit. Um, number, this, we'll, we'll set aside this disagreement on number four for a minute just for, for clarity. Um, five will just grant that they're not dependent on the material world and, and move on to six where you're, where you're saying log logical absolutes are conceptual by nature. And I'd argue that you're using the wrong word there. Um, just for the sake of clarity, that instead of conceptual, which implies this problem you were just talking about, that, you know, that it is some product of thought, that the correct word to use there is actually abstract. That logical well, absolutes are abstract by nature. Um, we would define abstraction, and abstraction requires uh, mental processes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it requires mental processes uh, in the sense, uh, wow, there may not be a good word for this. Um, See, I, let, me, let me jump in a little bit and help you out because I've, honestly, I've wrestled with just that right where you're at. Well, there is a flaw. There is a flaw, a logical flaw in 6.1, and that's, easily to de that's easy to demonstrate. 
I, irrespective. Are you, saying, are you saying that logic is not a, okay, because logic is a process of the mind, is what 6A uh, says. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you're saying logic is not a process of the mind? No, this is, this is the fallacy, this is the fallacy I'm talking about. All, all the way up to this point, you say logical absolutes, logical absolutes, logical absolutes, and then you say logic is a process of the mind. What you're doing in 6-1 is...